Hi friends, it's Dana here. I just got back from a vacation in Walt Disney World and I got to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World with my family, which was super fun. And I got these wonderful Minnie Mouse ears there, which are specifically for the 50th anniversary. I always have to get myself some Minnie Mouse ears when I'm in Disney World because when I'm there, I pretty much feel like a kid again, and there's really no place on earth that makes me feel quite that much like a kid again, and I feel like there's nothing more kid-like than putting on, you know, dress-up stuff. <laughs> so these are my ears this time. I probably won't go again for a while, but uh, it really gives me something to look forward to, just like this book. It is all about Walt Disney, and it takes you through how he ended up creating Walt Disney World and all of his wonderful movies, which I think is such a cool story, and he's really a special, unique human being. So let's hear all about it in I Am Walt Disney by Brad Meltzler and illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos. Here we go. I am Walt Disney. What is your happy place? Mine was this small town in Missouri called Marceline. My family moved here when I was four years old. I love the big green fields and weeping willows. There were animals everywhere and we had every type of apple, including giant Wolf River apples. There was even a railroad that ran through town. We'd fish in the summer and go sledding in the winter. It was the kind of place where neighbors would help each other. It was how the world was supposed to be. It's also where I saw a play called Peter Pan. I can fly, watch this. Soon after I played Peter Pan in our school play, my older brother Roy ran the ropes. So I can fly. No actor was ever more committed to his role. When I was growing up, our town seemed like paradise. And the very best part of it was that my whole family was always around. One uncle was an engineer. Another uncle used to teach me all about plants. That's a Missouri evening primrose. And my fancy Aunt Maggie used to bring me great gifts. Here you go, Walter. Something for you to draw in. You're so good at it, you should do it more. Aunt Maggie's encouragement changed my life, especially because my dad didn't really support my drawing. How are you ever gonna make money with that? I don't know, just like it. When I was seven years old, I made my first sale. Neighbors bought some of my sketches. But one day my art got me in a bit of trouble my parents had gone into town, leaving my sister and me alone. What's this black stuff in the barrel? Tar. It's so thick and goopy. Think we can paint with it? Uh, sure that's a good idea, Walt. What if it doesn't come off? Ah, it'll come off. Watch this. My tar painting never came off. Years later, when we moved to Kansas City, it was still on the side of our house. My first big art display. That boy should know better. Uh-oh. When I was nine, we left Marceline and moved away from the big green fields, the trains, the close-knit community. In Kansas City, life was different. I'd wake up at 3.30 in the morning to deliver newspapers. I'm so tired. I get home at 6 a.m. and eat breakfast before school. Still so tired. Then I'd leave school a half hour early every day to pick up the newspapers that had to be delivered each afternoon. So tired. For six years, I had that delivery route. I worked so hard, I rarely had any real playtime. Our family needed the money, so I always kept at it. In the winter, the snow would come up to my neck. Still so tired and cold. Fortunately, I found friends who understood me. In fifth grade, my neighbor Walt Pfeffer and I used to perform as Charlie Chaplin. Presenting the two Walts! You're doing great! 
<laughs> Some teachers said I was distracted in class, that I was too much of a dreamer. I'd spend hours scribbling in the margins of my textbooks, entertaining others by making the pictures move when you flip the pages. Watch this. Whoa, super cool. Drawing was my happy place. When someone made a clubhouse, I was the one who decorated it. I even decorated the local barber shop. Eventually, I started working for a company that made the advertisements they show before movies. These ads included something that was just getting started back then, animation. This is my friend and artist named Ub Airworks. He eventually helped me create a character named Mickey Mouse. Who's Mickey Mouse? You'll see. Back then, animated cartoons were brand new. I went to the library to learn more, but there was only one book about them. My first short films were mainly advertisements, but soon I had my own ideas. Watch this. It's about a little girl who can enter her own dreams, a mix of live action and animation. I'm calling it Alice in Wonderland. The film seemed like such a good idea we started our own company. It was a total failure. I'm sorry, Walt, you're out of money. It's time to declare bankruptcy. I was 21 years old and so poor, I'd sleep in my office and take baths once a week at the train station. It never let me down. Determined as ever, I moved to California. My big break came from this woman, Margaret Winkler, one of my most successful animation distributors in the country. I like your Alice's Wonderland idea. I'd like to order a series. Pretend you're mad, now pretend you're scared, now pretend you're sad. Those were Walt's favorite things to do, pretending and creating. He was back in his happy place. Ub Eworks came in to help with the animation. Then he, we took on a new name, Walt Disney Studios. We were on our way to our best creation of all, Mortimer Mouse. Mortimer? That's a horrible name. This is my wife, Lillian. That was her real reaction. The mouse needs a new name. What about Mickey? I like it way better than Mortimer. That's how Mickey Mouse was born. But our first Mickey cartoon didn't sell. He wasn't an immediate success. We didn't give up. Using a bed sheet as a screen, our studio tested a new cartoon and added music. We put the noisy projector outside so it wouldn't interfere. I hit a small band behind the door and for the first time in history, the cartoon, it's in sync with the music. I've never seen anything like this. It's incredible. The word you're looking for is historic. It was historic. Steamboat Willie changed the future of animation. On November 18th, 1928, it premiered at the Colony Theater in New York. Did the audience like it? What do you think? Whoa. But do you want to know the real secret of Mickey's success? Our animators. Ub Ewerks and so many others brought Mickey to life. From the start, people loved our little mouse. They related to him. The quality has to be the best. Mickey's whole world needs to feel believable. When Mickey bangs the piano, we need to feel it. See that thing he's doing with his hands? Draw Mickey just like that. The world could feel scary, but in Mickey Mouse, audiences found a character who took them to their happy place. Walt called it personality animation. The audience had to know how Mickey felt and even how the piano felt. Plus, there was a secret that we animators knew. Walt was Mickey, and Mickey was Walt, both fearless, both resourceful. With each film, we worked harder, always trying to improve. See how the artists draw their own expressions into the characters? The more human the characters' expressions, the more believable the story is. On top of that, we always searched for the perfect voice. Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> this guy on the radio is singing in a goat voice. That's our talking duck. That's how I found Clarence Nash, the voice of Donald Duck. And then people didn't take animation seriously, but we did. By 1934, I had one of my biggest ideas ever. Instead of just a short cartoon, 
we're going to do a full length movie. It'll have a princess who loves animals and talks to them. And she lives with a wicked stepmother who's jealous of her. But when she escapes into the forest, she finds a family of dwarves who make everyone laugh. Did you know some of the names that were considered for the dwarves were dirty, blabby, puffy, baldy, and burpy? For real, burpy. And in the end, through the love and dedication of her dwarf family, she lives happily ever after. For three hours, I acted out the entire movie, every single part. The only question was, would anyone watch a full-length cartoon for almost two hours? They would. <laughs> Snow White and the Seven Dwarves in 1937, Pinocchio in 1940, Dumbo in 1941, Bambi in 1942, Cinderella in 1950, and Peter Pan in 1953. Over time, we made more than movies. On Sunday afternoons, I'd take my daughters to the Griffith Park merry-go-round. There's nothing for parents to do here. You've got to have a place where the whole family can have fun. I started studying amusement parks and historical sites. Our plans quickly grew. We can divide the place up into different lands. We'll include worlds of yesterday, tomorrow, and fantasy. What about today? No, nothing of the present will exist there. And when you walk in, that what'll it look like? Main Street, USA. I can see it now. Oh, and we should add a train. Is he talking about the park or his hometown? Not sure there's a difference. Our goal was to build the happiest place on Earth. We called it Disneyland. Did you know Walt was the first one to ride the attractions? On opening day, parts of the park ended in dirt since we didn't have the money or time to complete it by then. But to me, Disneyland would never be completed, not as long as there was imagination in the world. Around the same time, we expanded into television, creating shows aimed at the whole family. And of course, we were still making movies. Silly old bear. <laughs> but of all the things I built, one of my very best was this, the California Institute of Arts, a college dedicated to building a community of artists. Today, Cal Arts trains the next generation of creators in art, design, film, music, theater, and dance. Are arts your happy place? Maybe you'll study here one day. In my life, my best memories came from my childhood. Those were peaceful days, happy days. It wasn't a fantasy land. It was a real place with real people. So when do you stop being a child? When do you stop dreaming? As Peter Pan taught me all those years ago, think of the happiest things. It's the same as having wings. <laughs> Did you know Walt Disney has won more Academy Awards than anyone else? 32 in total. He also won the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian award in the United States. See this signature? It's modeled on Walt Disney's, but was far, his was far more loopy. The author of this book surprises his kids once a year by driving straight to the Walt Disney World Resort instead of school. For real. <laughs> As Walt planned his Disney World, he also imagined a way to help cities. He called it the Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow, Epcot. Though the plans for this site eventually changed the park that was built stands in his honor. Now I want you to think of your happy place. Got it in your heart? I promise you it will never leave you. It is your own magic kingdom. Our greatest dreams are always a part of us. They nurture us, especially when we nurture them. We can all use some magic in our lives. If you look, it's there. And when you let that magic into your heart, you can fly. I am Walt Disney, and I know that the person who makes dreams come true is you. <laughs> That is the end, friends. Thank you so much for reading with me. I know my happy place is reading with you. Thank you so much, and please subscribe so you can read with me more. Thanks. Bye.